learn from a bum, Omar, Shamsuddin. What I learned from a bum, maybe it's what not to do. Snub Nub 7 easy. There's a reason why after 100 channels destroyed, Angel Snub Nub 7 is still here. There's a reason why nobody wanna get in a beat with Angel Snub Nub 7. But you don't take me seriously.
This is a story about control. My control. Control of what I say and control of what I do. And this time I'm gonna do it my way. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Are we ready? I am. Because it's all about control. And I've got lots of it. do that, 
there's something that grinds my gears. Woo! What is it that you want to rant about today, my brother? Is something making you very angry, my brother? <laughs> because something is grinding my gears. Woo! What grinds my gears is when we put our opinion or our belief or whatever it is, our face, whatever, whatever we put out on social media, in the public, we don't expect negative feedback. Oh, we have no problem with positive feedback, something that we can benefit from. Oh, we love that. You eat, you eat that up. But the reality is there are those who will like what you say, like what you do, like what you look like, and there are those who don't know you at all, don't like your opinion, don't like the way you look, hate your guts, don't know nothing about you. That's the reality of celebrity. That's the reality of social media. Denzel Washington has many people who like Denzel Washington. Then there are those who hate Denzel Washington guts. That's how it is out here on social media. So when we bring the church, when we bring our religion, our spirituality, to social media then expect the same thing to happen and you already know that there are atheists agnostics there are many people who just question don't like people from other religions other opinions other beliefs that don't like or may not like what you're talking about now, if you can't handle the heat, what do they say? If you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen. That's what they say. You need to make a page just for people like yourself. Stop trying to convert people. Stop trying to teach people because you ain't no damn teacher because you don't even really know what you believe. When it comes down to it, these folks don't even know what they believe. They just know the narrative. You didn't really read the Quran. You didn't really read the Bible. You didn't really read nothing. You didn't really research and study nothing. You just read enough, studied enough to satisfy this narrative, uh, this agenda that you want to promote, this narrative that you want to sell. You don't, you have not really studied anything. Because if you really studied, if you really thoroughly examine these beliefs, there's a reason why they're called belief. You will see the nonsense. You will see the contradiction. You will see that it, it, it's not logical. You see that it, it, has, it has no reason in it. it. It's nonsensical. You will see all those things, but you don't see it because that's not your, your brain. You have enslaved your brain. You force your brain to believe in Nonsense. And you only do enough study. You only look at things enough, just enough to support what you believe. That's all. No more, no less. You, you're not serious about the truth. You're not serious about the truth. Only promoting what you believe. Again, if you cannot handle the heat, get out the kitchen. I've been here on YouTube since 2007. I've been able to handle the heat, not only from those who watch videos, but from Google or Facebook itself. I really haven't had a lot of trouble out of Facebook, but Google has terminated over 100 
of my channels. Google, a billion dollar corporation, take upon itself to harass and stalk and mess with somebody that only get 10 views. I get 10 views because that's what they try to control who can hear what I have to say. A nobody. A nobody. With 10 subscribers and 10 views. If, see, if you was really thinking, you would wonder, why would a billion dollar corporation like Google be interested in what I have to say? Then, of course, hate speech and all this other nonsense. We went to court with Google. They could not show a court hate speech and all this other nonsense that they accused to justify terminating your child. I don't violate nothing. I just speak my ten, uh, uh, opinion, my opinion. My, I draw, I speak about the conclusions that I come up with. Not because the, the teachings or the Bible say or the Quran said, what I determine, my conclusions in my life, I experience. Why would a corporation, a billion dollar corporation, be interested. Why would a YouTuber with 50, 60, 100,000 subscribers, why would they be interested in flagging my channel and messing with somebody that don't have nothing? You should, you should ask yourself a question. You should wonder about these things, but you don't. Because you don't think at all. A community of non-thinkers. What grinds my gears? Brother, what is really grinding your gears? We want to talk about what's grinding my gears right now. What's, what's getting to me right now is when people say, Stop attacking my religion. I'm attacking somebody's religion. So if that's your religion, that means you own it some kind of way. I've been trying to think of a, a simple analogy, and this is the best I could come up with. I think it I think it, it proves my point. You go to McDonald's and get a hamburger. Extra cheese. Extra tomato, please. Whatever. Oh, that's Burger King. Have it my way. Okay. And somebody put their hand on your hamburger. Hey, get the, uh, don't put your hand on my hamburger. It is your hamburger. But you're not Burger King. You bought a product and got a product from somebody else. You wasn't in your kitchen. And put the hamburger together and the egg and the onions and the green peppers or whatever that you put in your hamburger. And you didn't bake the bun and it, it didn't come out your oven. You went to Burger King and got you a Whopper. Don't put your hands on my Whopper, bro. You need to go on with that. That is your hamburger, but you're not Burger King. And you do have the right to talk about or tell somebody don't put your hands on my hamburger but you don't own Burger King you don't own the corporation Burger King so you tell people and you get all upset and we I understand why you're upset because you have taken ownership Somebody putting their hand on your hamburger that their hand's not washed, nasty, whatever. Anyway, just don't be touching my food. So that's the way you look at religion. Don't touch my food, you know, whatever. But nobody's touching your food. You, how you gonna talk about somebody? Uh, you bought Burger King? That's nasty. Them old nasty sesame seeds. Burger King, nasty. Them old nasty onion rings and fries they got. Burger King is nasty. Don't you talk about my Burger King. You don't own Bur Burger King.
Burger King. Why you get offended? You like Burger King? Other people don't like Burger King. That's not your corporation. That's not your hamburger. People have the right not to like Burger King. I like McDonald's better. There's people that don't like fast food at all. They have the right. On social media, they talk about, uh, y'all should stop eating fast food and drink some of this green juice. I don't like green juice. Then they get angry because you talk about their green juice. This healthy, that's healthy for you. I don't give a damn about your green juice. I don't care what Dr. Sebi said. I don't care what Dick Gregory said. See, now you, see, this, 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 this is the hypocrisy. You want the right to talk about somebody else's belief, somebody else, what, how they live their life. You want the right to be able to say on social media or whatever, oh, you going to hell because you don't believe in Jesus. You want to be able to say that. But when somebody tell you about yourself, you can't handle it. That grinds my gears. If we can dish it out, we should be able to take it. You don't own no religion. You the religion lapdog. You the religion slave. You the religion pet. The majority of you didn't live in the Middle East. You don't have nobody. You're not related to Lot or Noah or Muhammad or none of these people from the Middle East. You was given my religion. It's not your religion. It didn't come from your parents. Well, it probably did. It was forced. This is how you got your, your religion. Hand me down from slavery hand me down by other people who was enslaved through generation through generation through colonization that's how you got it from the oppressor or somebody somewhere sold it to you it's not even there they gave you some McDonald's gave you some Burger King that's a pretty nice hamburger they don't own Burger King. They introduced it to you and you said, uh, that do taste good. Oh, Islam. That tastes good. Yep, Jesus can fix it all right. But it didn't come to you. It didn't come through you. It's not yours. Talk about my religion. It's not your religion. You got it from somebody. And you didn't even get it from the land that you was born on, you got it from somebody 9,000 miles away from you. You got it from people who don't even speak your language. How is it? How the hell is it your religion? You don't even speak the damn language. Y'all some silly ass, slave ass people. Childish people. You want me to be like you, a slave, a lap dog for somebody. If I'm going to believe in God, then I have a personal experience with God. I don't need nobody to tell me what somebody wrote in a book 9,000 miles away from me. If I got to believe in God, it's because I experienced God myself. And God spoke to me. And so when I say it's my religion, it's mine because nobody gave it to me. My experience. God came and talked to me. God revealed to me. I don't need your holy Bible. I don't need your holy Quran. Because God talked to me. That was your message. For you. Just like in your house. And our parents talked to the family. And all the children are doing different things. All the children are different. So the parents have a, a message for that child. That the, the parents have a certain message. It might be similar, but they all have their own message for them. 
And then, if you look at it, some of it might be a similar message. But because we're different, the message has got to be different because all of us are different. Because this child might be going to law school. That child might be an auto mechanic. So, of course, the messages can't be the same because everybody's on different paths. Because everybody, the people are different. People on the earth are different, so God should have a different message for them. Why would God have to tell me, thou shalt not kill, when we never done that? God has to tell those who are murderers and killers, got to tell them that. God has to tell you to stop doing those. Cause, but God don't have to, you don't have to tell nobody that don't smoke. You need to stop smoking. I never did smoke. And so you want to take these messages from these people. Clearly, they are in bad shape. That God constantly got to be in their backside. And you want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of someone else evil. I don't want to be part of somebody else's rebellion against the God. If you believe in God. Why would you want to be part of their rebellion? And they include you in it. And you're not even guilty of the things that they done. I'm not going to accept the crime. And do the time for somebody else. But that's what y'all do. The sin. The sin of them. You don't have nothing to do with it. We weren't even here. Don't know nothing about it. It makes no sense. And in real life, you don't do it. In real life, you don't run around trying to become part of, uh, of the sin of other people. You're, you're not going to go to jail and prison for somebody else's crime. But the Bible and the Quran and all this religious stuff you willing to be part of their rebellion. So that goes to show you're not very smart. You're not very wise. But the main thing is, it's not your religion. If it was your religion, I could understand why you really get so upset. But it's not your religion. It belongs to somebody else. Some dead people that you don't even know nothing about, you never met, you're not related to, you can't speak their language, never lived on their continent. Don't mess with my, attack my religion. No, you their lapdog. And your master gave it to you. You good boy. You good girl. That's what you have done. You made a slave out of yourself. And I'm not going to be part of that. Enjoy. And if you don't want me to talk about it, then block me. When you see me talking, you're uninvited. Just block, block the people. Stick with the other slaves like yourself. But when you come out here in the public, then you need to be able to handle the heat or get the hell out the kitchen. What did they say in Africa? When you told them when the Christians talk about y'all gonna go to hell, and the Africans used to was telling them, We eat fire. I eat fire. So your threats of going to hell and all that don't bother me none. I'm from Mississippi, I can handle the heat. Do, 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 do. People always do me Be careful what they do 
Don't go around picking young girls' hearts. He and mother always told me, I'll be careful with your love. Be careful what you do. When you love me, tell me the truth. Hey, hey, I feel the change. Not my love. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one. But the kid is not my son. Do, 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 do. She says I am the one. Who oh, no. But the kid is not my son. He, he, he. He, he, he. <laughs> The teacher said, imagine how Michael Jackson felt when he told Joseph, I want out of the Jackson 5. Michael wanted his freedom. You know, a lot of times when we say that we are African people, a lot of us believe that we have to undress ourselves. You see, not be ourselves. What we have become today, we must undo that and grow and go across the water to be somebody else, to be a tribe that we have no relationship to, to just blend in. When we are the greatest segment of African culture on the planet today, why would we want to be somebody else? When we are the greatest expression of, of advancement and greatness on the planet in African culture today, everybody is trying to be us. But we're not trying to be ourselves. We don't see the power in, in black America, you see? And so, you know, why would we want to be somebody else when we so goddamn good at being ourselves? Number one, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit and experiment to see if I can simulcast off of these channels. So right now, I am simulcasting on YouTube, um, Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry YouTube channel. Angel Snuffin' Up 7 YouTube channel and Reality's Temple on Earth YouTube channel. All at the same time. <laughs> it's sort of odd. I'm looking at I'm looking at three. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Especially when you're summer casting on channels that you're really not supposed to be able to do because you're supposed to have at least a thousand subscribers to uh, broadcast. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. Folks always find a way to get over. Woo! Man. So you know, uh, soul brothers and sisters, the black man and woman don't learn nothing. We don't learn nothing. We find one way and that's and we stick to it. Even though it's not working, we stick to it. Now, somebody decided to hell with YouTube talking about you got to have a thousand subscribers to go live. So somebody out there said we're going to come up with a way where we can go live the hell with YouTube and having a thousand subscribers. Somebody put their brain to work. We don't, we don't use our brain. The black man and woman don't use our brain. We want to sound. We want to sound like we're using our brain. Like the brother that was with us yesterday, brother Jesus or brother Jesus, I didn't want to call himself. 
want to sound smart. And that's all right to sound smart. What does sounding smart produce? Because I'm very sure the person who developed a way to get around, uh, and this is not the first app, because there was another app, and YouTube found a way to shut it down. So somebody came up with a new app to get around YouTube's garbage. But that's how it is. Your brain is developed to solve problems. We don't use our brain. We want to use the brain of some leader. The Honorable Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Tariq Nasheed, uh, Tahaka Bay. We want somebody else to do our thinking for us. You're never going to get nowhere like that. Because what if they cannot solve the problem that you need solved? It's too many things out here. It's too many problems for one person to try to solve and concentrate on. This is why I believe, I feel as though humanity could be further in their technology if it was not for racism and sexism and all these damn isms and getting drunk and acting stupid. Humanity would be further out there because you would have more people whose minds would be more clear more people that can concentrate on our problems and finding solutions to those problems. Who knows how many people that's a crackhead had they not been on crack, had they not been using drugs or be a drunk, who knows what they might have come up with or thought about to solve one of our problems to make our lives better. We hinder ourselves. We keep ourselves from progressing when we don't use our brain. And so this is why so many people don't understand us, those who come here and listen to these words, because we're trying our best to use our brain. And one of the main problems is how can we overcome these obstacles that's keeping us from our rise? And the main obstacles are these outdated, archaic teachings and these beliefs that we don't want to let go. So you cannot you cannot progress. I just wanted to uh, bring an uh, analogy or an example to give you to give us a reason. I, I mean, you can be you can be whatever you want. You can be a gumball machine if you want to. You can be Tweety Bird if you want to. You can be whatever you want to. I have no problem with that. That's your prerogative. However, whenever we adopt something or an identity and it looks weird, don't get angry because people look at you weird. You talk about, I'm Tweety Bird. Where your beak at? Where your yellow feathers at? You don't look like Tweety Bird. But you want to be Tweety Bird, so be it. So here we are going on 500 years in the only place we've ever been. We've never been nowhere else. We're not an immigrant. The, origi the original breeding stock were brought here. We're not them. None of us came off no boat. None of us was a slave. We're not immigrants. Our origin and our beginning is right here. And there's no evidence, no other proof that you can show. 
if you can, please come here and show us your some. Uh, you know, when they, when you was a slave and they had you on a ship and they brought your ass here from from somewhere in Africa or wherever the hell you want to try to claim, or you some kind of Native American, show us when you was that. The original breeding stock was that. We're not that. We're we are 400 years after the fact. And whenever you begin to mix somebody up and change them, they're no longer what they was 400 years ago. We see that in plants and animals that we grow. You can go on YouTube and just research and look up what a gallon of milk looked like in 1950 and what a gallon of milk look like now. Things change. We're not them. We talk about we talk about they stole our language, our culture. We never had it. We never had that language. We never had that culture. We're not them. The original breeding stock, the original people that kicked it off, they could make those claims. We cannot say, we never had no original language. We never had, the only thing we ever known was the King's English. That's all we ever known. You never had no other language. If we had any of these different things, they could not stop in secret we will pass this down from generation to generation. You cannot pass down from generation to generation what you never had. And what's so sad, even the things that we know that we develop, we don't even pass that down. So what do you expect from people that was under oppression? It was against the law for them to teach their children Show them children things that monsters say you cannot have. I'm not going to get angry because you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite. I'm not going to get angry because you call yourself a Muslim. I'm not going to get angry. Whatever you want to call yourself. But at the same time, don't get angry when somebody question that because you don't look like that. Where you get that from? Because a name and an identity describe who and what you're supposed to be. If you talk about an apple, you don't expect to see an orange. If you talk about a mop, you don't expect to see a dishwashing handle. If you're talking about a Mercedes, you don't expect to see a Pinto. But this is what we do in ignorance. If that's what you are, you should be able to easily prove it. You cannot do it. It's, it's what you believe. And belief does not require facts. Belief does not require logic. It does not require common sense. It does not require no. So you can be, call yourself and do whatever the hell you, you, you please. But I want to give a, an example or an analogy of what you look like in the eyes of the world. We look crazy. Being an African, we look crazy running around here being the Muslims and Hebrew Israelites and Kemetic and all this stuff. We look crazy. Let me give you an example. Now, I know, I don't have to guess, I don't have to believe, I don't have to do the, get the, the, the research, I don't have to get the information, I don't have to go through all that. I know I'm from the state of Mississippi. Half my childhood in the state of Mississippi, I was born during Jim Crow era. 
I know. I don't have to believe. I don't have to do no research. I'm, I'm not lost. They didn't steal my, they didn't steal the knowledge. I know this. I know. Okay, so I come from Mississippi. It's been years. I passed through Mississippi as a truck driver. Still, I have relatives there, have friends that's there in Mississippi. I actually live there. You make it, you never, we keep talking about all this stuff about Africa and Israelites and all this other stuff. You ain't never lived in these places. You have no relatives. Okay, but look, I know these things. I know that I'm from the state of Mississippi. So I get in my car and let's go to Mississippi. Y'all ready? Let's go. Going through, going through Missouri. Going through Arkansas. Uh-oh, getting ready to cross the Mississippi border. In Mississippi, y'all. Uh-oh, getting long gas. Need to get me some gas. All right, we at the gas station. Woo! The motherland. My birthplace. I'm in Mississippi, y'all. I'm in this great state of Mississippi. I was born here. I know. I don't have to guess. I know. The great state of Mississippi. Okay, so. I'm going to the gas. Good evening, soul brothers and sisters. This is... Tangy Cox, the black sheep, and I am propositioning you to entertain just a little while of being in reality. And this is gonna hurt soul sisters and brothers because a lot of us cannot accept reality. I empower you to for one year to subscribe to the Reality Temple on Earth. And at the end of 12 months, draw your conclusion of what have you learned in that amount of time. I empower you. You will never, ever, ever think, feel, or entertain nonsense ever again, period. I would like to see my soul sisters and brothers awaken. This requires time. You need to spend about a year watching, researching, and looking. The reality temple on earth is life changing. And I stand on that. Welcome to the Reality Tip on Earth, Dragon Manifest. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, brother. This is an honor. When I first saw your channel, I said, oh, this is an ancestor that has most definitely returned. Yes, most sir. definitely. This is not a new ancestor. This is an old ancestor. <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could hear, you could feel the ancestors through you. You know, most people probably say, "What is he talking about?" Right. They don't get it. You gotta, you you gotta be on that on that level. If you say that I'm I'm divine and I'm a prophet, where the hell did your ass go to? Why aren't you heeding the call? Since I'm a prophet, since I'm divine, some people excuse the language. Some people just like talking out their ass. 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 That's what they like to do. My black people, it's all about the unity. It's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving. Black people, it's all about the unity, there's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me.
Like everything, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality's temple. Reality's simple. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like everything, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at uh let's see talik says can you send a shout out to my platform the realities temple on earth internet ministry our theme this year is after purge comes the heal up shout out to your platform talik all the best to you guys with continuing to stretch in perspective to stretch in what is possible and to continue to bring healing into the space of yourself and others yes station and I'm, I'm telling the I, i'm gonna tell the people lord i'm so happy i'm back in mississippi i was born in mississippi i'm a i'm a mississippi man i'm glad to be i'm glad to be home mississippi lord and lord i'm, I'm home in mississippi what do you think the people in the gas station gonna do do you think the people in the gas station are gonna say, "Welcome home, brother"? Glad you back back home this, to, to Mississippi. People look at gonna look at me like I'm crazy. Say, "What the hell is who, who gives a damn?" So, uh, so I, so now I'm getting ready to pay my gas for my gas. Tell the court, I was I was born here in, in the state of Mississippi. I was born here and raised here, and my great great grandfather and people was here, and blah. And the clerk, what you, what you think the clerk gonna do? The clerk gonna look at me. That's that's nice. Yeah, yeah. You know they gonna try to be nice to you. This guy crazy as hell. I, I'm in Mississippi. I turned to somebody else in the store. Hey, it's been a long time. I haven't been to Mississippi. In 30 years, hey, I haven't been to Mississippi in 30 years, y'all. I'm back home. This is where I was born. Yeah, I'm in Mississippi. Now, some people would be nice. I'm glad you're back. Some people would say, I'm glad that you're back. You're going to come back to stay? But the, the majority of people are going to look at you like you're crazy. They're like, so what? I'm going to go to the Capitol. I'm going to go to Jackson, Mississippi. I'm going to go to the Capitol and, and talk to the mayor. I'm going to tell the mayor, I, I'm, I'm back in Mississippi. This is my birthplace. What you think? What kind of treatment you think I'm going to get? I go to Jackson, Mississippi to the Capitol. I want to talk to the mayor. I just want to I just want to hug the mayor. I'm so happy to be back in Mississippi. What do you think the mayor is going to do? I was born here. Excuse me, sir. Do you have an appointment to see the mayor? No, I just want to tell the mayor. I want to tell the people. I'm so happy to be back. I was born in Mississippi. Uh, and yo, and yeah, okay, that's that's nice. We we glad that you your folks gonna treat you nice. Look at you crazy as hell. Then I, this is my birthplace. I love Mississippi. This is where I come from. I should never. I should never left. I, I, this is this is where I need to be at, Mississippi. This is how you think the people are gonna respond. They gonna look at me like I'm crazy, and you are. You are a nutcase. You are out of your damn mind. <laughs> So now I know. I know. I don't. I don't believe. I don't have to talk about. Well, you know, my people came off the slave ships and went there. I don't have to go through all. That. I was born in the state of Mississippi. They don't care. They're gonna say that's nice, uh, sir. You owe forty nine dollars and ninety five cents for the gas you just bought. Oh, but I'm from the state of Mississippi. I was born here. That, that's nice, sir. Uh, you owe forty nine dollars 
and 95 cent for your gas that you just bought in Mississippi. Who cares? They don't give a damn. They don't care. So now, here you are. You speculate because you have no real proof. You speculate and you believe. And you might be sincere in your belief. I'm an African. Now, I'm going to Mississippi. I'm going to a specific place that I know. Here you are. I'm an African. I'm a proud to be an African. And you just try to find your spot on the continent. And you go. But you ain't never been there before. You a tourist. So you go there. And they will treat you, some of them, because you have money, they will treat you a certain way. And their big brother. And some of them are programmed like you are. My American lost brother. My American... My American lost brother. Oh, I love you, brother. They will, they will do that to you. Because a lot of them are programmed like you because you brought that to them. They did not develop that. They learned that mindset from you. It didn't come from them. So, you go over there and you tell them, I'm so happy to be in the motherland. Oh, the motherland. I'm so good to be back home. It's, how is it your home? I can, I can actually go to the place where I was birthed in Mississippi. You call Africa your home. Well, go to your home. You're on the continent. Well, go to your home. Go to your home. You can't. And you go and tell these people, uh, I'm your long lost kidnapped African brother and all this kind of good stuff. They look at you just like the people in Mississippi would look at me. That's nice. And you go to their restaurants, you go to the street market and get you some food. Oh, Maybelline. There goes some tofu. Let's try that tofu. How much is that tofu? Oh, my brother, the tofu is blah, 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 blah. It's the tofu. That's what they would do. I feel, I feel like I'm back in, I feel like I'm back. You ain't never ate no African food. What is the tofu? Well, my brother, the tofu is goat and some spice you never heard about and some carrots, you heard of carrots. It's a bunch of stuff that you really don't know nothing about. And you taste it, you really don't like it, but I come from Africa, I'm gonna have to get used to eating African food. And they look at you like you crazy. Because they know, they know that you're not an African. They know that this, this is not you. And they will talk to you and they will humor you. And when it's all said and done, uh, the tofu is uh, $5 in American money. They humor you. In, they humor us in our ignorance. And some of you, you put on these clothes and you go to Israel. What the hell are you doing here? Uh, I'm here. This is where my people come from, uh, Israel or whatever. You ain't never been there. You don't know nothing about that stuff at all. And they, they, might, they, they humor us in our ignorance. But this is what we look like in the eyes of the world. We look stupid because it's not us. And we think that we're, we're being smart, we're being intelligent. Like we found something. It's not you. So if so, if I went to Mississippi, and I know I'm, I was born in Mississippi, they're not going to treat me special. 
I'm not gonna get any special privileges because I was born in Mississippi. You go to Africa and call yourself African, they ain't gonna treat you special. There ain't nothing special about you, so what? So what's the sense of wrapping yourself up around an identity? There's no benefit. Like, so what? That's why I say, what's wrong with being yourself? Be yourself. Accept your own and be yourself. I'm not a Muslim, not an African, not a Hebrew Israelite, not none of those different things. If you want to continue to look like this in the eyes of the world, that's your business. They will humor you. Now, some people, some of those African people will tell you, you white man. They will tell you in your face, you're a white man. But then there are those who will exploit you in your ignorance. Hey, how you doing, my mother, American brother? You want to go see where your ancestors was held up and, and got on a boat and came to America? They, they sell you a tourist. Nothing but a tourist. They go, they go with the lie because they can make money off of you. And everybody makes money off of you. You buy these costumes or whatever so they can make money off of you because it's not you. Some of us just don't know no better. But then there are those who want to do better and they recognize what I'm saying is right and don't want to look and don't want to look foolish like that anymore. But that's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted. I wanted to make the video short. I didn't want to spend a long, long time. I just wanted to get that off my chest because that's how we look in the eyes of the world. We're not that. So you will spend a lot of time trying to explain how you are that. I don't have to worry about it. You do. Trying to explain that you are apple trying to show that you really are or that you really are orange. I don't have to go through all that. You want to go through all that stress? You want to go through all that those type of problems? That's your business. Good luck. But don't get angry at people. Don't get upset with people. When they call you out on your ignorance. You were ignorant, but now you've listened to the real truth and there's no excuse for you to continue to be that that and continue to embarrass yourself in the eyes of the world. Bishop not going to say it, I will, I will tell y'all. Y'all are the most boring people I have ever been around in my life. I get dreadful every time it's time to worship with y'all. Because y'all don't bring nothing to the table. I, I'm tired.
how to bring us up to the table. None of y'all got nothing to bring. Because y'all y'all worried about stuff that happened yesterday. Wasting time. Y'all y'all worried about stuff that don't even matter. Wasting time. My new attitude is if you're not going to come to church to worship, stay home. And I say this all the time. I don't need none of y'all. I love everyone in here. I, I love everyone. I don't need not any one of y'all in here. At all. Y'all don't do nothing for me, but look at me while I'm saying it anyhow. Y'all are a bunch of boring, dead people. And I swear to God, I swear, I swear on everything I love. If it don't change, y'all not gonna see any benefit from the Lord. Y'all not, y'all, not, y'all, y'all cannot worship with song. With song. We're not even talking about listening to the word. We're talking about praise and worship. If y'all can't even listen to songs and be happy that someone's taking their time out to sing for y'all, and mind you, I don't get paid for this. So I really just sing to y'all for my hip, uh, for my benefits. And just for y'all to look real ugly and stupid. I'm tired of the church for wasting my time. and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam Cooke wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, Black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It's said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ibn Rod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. The Mississippi Campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics, the law, be able to do your own thing for a change, create an, an economy, create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. All eyes on the man, the Savior. So the question I want to raise before we actually get into our topic, because it is about manhood, the question I want to raise is, we've looked for these men, not only Master Farah Muhammad, but Jesus is a man. And all the prophets and everything about the Savior. Because we never are taught about a, I guess you could say, savoris. A female. So we're looking for a man. And we've been looking for a man for thousands of years to save us. I raised the question. Why aren't we saved? Why are we still talking about this? Because if this person was a savior or is a savior, and we have been saved, and it's according to what time they came, 
we should be saved. So Master Farah Muhammad is the Savior and he came to us. Allah in the person, July 4th, 1930. It is 2024 now. And we're still talking about a Savior. If the Savior didn't save us in 1930, what make you think that the Savior can save us in 2024? If the Savior did not save you 2,000 years ago, what make you think the Savior can save you in 2024? The fireman saved their lives in 2010. And you see them walking around just fine. Hey man, you was in a fire. Oh, I'm not in the fire no more. I think the fireman, they saved my life. But Oh, but that was back in 2004, I mean 2010, because I was saved. You don't save nobody, and it takes thousands and hundreds of years to save them. That defeats the purpose of saving. If I'm in a fire, I need saving right now. I need to get out of this fire. If I'm being robbed in my store, I need a police officer right now. I cannot wait tomorrow or next week. I need to be saved today. So this doesn't make any sense that we wait hundreds and thousands of years for a savior. And we're still talking about we're not saved. So clearly, either that was not the Savior, or the Savior was incompetent, because we are not saved. We should not have a meeting every year talking about our Savior has arrived. Well, if our Savior has arrived, we should be saved, but we're not. And if you notice, the people that actually bring us benefit don't call themselves a savior. The firemen, the policemen. Dr. Martin Luther King never called himself a savior. I never heard Malcolm X call himself a savior. I never heard the Black Panther Party or Harriet Tubman or any of these with boots on the ground that sacrificed and some died in the struggle. I never heard them call themselves a savior, but the savior, those are whom we wait for, have done little for us. But those who don't claim to be a savior, we benefit more so than from the actual people that we've been waiting hundreds and thousands of years for. It doesn't make sense, people. And if it doesn't make any sense, it's not true. There's only one Savior. Or maybe perhaps two. The first Savior is what can you do for yourself? And the second Savior is the assistant. Because I'm trying to save myself in this water, but I'm, I can't swim. I'm doing the best I can. So you need assistance. And that Savior jumps in the water, putting their own life in danger to save your life. I don't have faith in your Saviors no more. Because I'm not going to wait a hundred years. I'm not going to wait a thousand years to get saved. You need to be saved now. So with all disrespect, with no disrespect, it does not make any sense to wait on Jesus. It makes no sense to wait for Master Farah Muhammad. Clearly they cannot save you. What are they saving you from? Because if you tell me what they're supposed to be saving you from, and you're still suffering 
you still are being affected by that condition, you're not saved. What's taking so long for them to save you if they are the savior? The job of the police officer, the job of the fireman, the job of, don't even have to be a job if somebody see you in trouble. They act now, they do something to resolve your problem now. They don't wait tomorrow. You need help now. So I cannot say that Jesus is my savior because I'm still in the same condition. Nothing has changed. I cannot say Master Farah Muhammad is my savior. I'm still in the same condition. Nothing has changed. I cannot call him. I cannot call God a savior because I'm still in the condition that I am even after thousands of years go by. It don't make any sense, people. Just rituals that make us feel good. I don't you don't need to feel good when you're in a fire because that fire burning you up. You need to get out of the fire. You don't need no ritual when somebody pull a gun on you, your money on your life. You need a police officer on the scene. You need help. You need a solution now. So my question is, what kind of saviors are these what are they doing for you? Because you're not saved. I cannot do it. And as a man, such thinking is unacceptable. Because if I'm a man and I love my family, I need help now. I'm a man and my family is trapped in a fire. I need a savior now. And if a man, a man is not going to wait for a savior, he's going to take the situation in his own hands to the best of his ability. Because he's not going to wait tomorrow and a few hours. I need to save my family now. What kind of saviors are these? Master Farah Muhammad is not my savior. But if it was not for Master Farah Muhammad, I would not be talking to you right now. And maybe Master Farah Muhammad himself could not save, but maybe because of what he started, he put into, into motion that which could bring or make us saved. But you shouldn't have to wait a hundred years and a thousand years. You need to be saved now. And most people that want to be saved because that's what they want. You cannot save somebody that don't want to be saved. You cannot help somebody who don't want to help themselves. What do it look like for a fireman to climb up the ladder and the person run back into the fire? So who's to say, who said that these want to be saved? Who asked to be saved? And maybe that's the reason why you're willing to wait a hundred years and a thousand years because you don't want to be saved anyway. Because those who are in need of saving are in big trouble. I need to get out of this situation now. We're in a state of emergency. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Bring Keep it real. What dear? Because I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real.
real. I am also your soul brother, number one. It's the truth. It's actual. Everything is satisfaction. He's heading your way again. Uncle Remus, the immortal storyteller in Walt Disney's honored motion picture classic. Now that's the kind of day when you can't open your mouth without a song jump right out of it. But it do die. My, oh, my, what a wonderful day. By Brother Angel Snubnob 7 at the Reality Temple. And to give props to him, because I listen to all of Angel Snubnub 7's videos, I think that um, he comes from a different angle. And there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out, and I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from, and I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the black supremacy movement as well. And I have nothing against that, because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. And you don't realize it. You don't realize it that God has been in prison. The devil was able to imprison God. So right inside your own self, your God self has been in prison and you have a false sense of self running rampant inside the temple. This is why you understand what I'm saying? You, yes, sir. You have to bring reality's temple here on earth. Reality's <laughs> temple here on earth. Because yes, sir. We have to realize the enemy is running rampant inside this temple. You don't want to be saved. It's a ritual. Huh? You go to Savior's Day just like going to church. Put on your suit and your bow ties and sell your pies and sing. You don't sing and dance like that, but you, you it's the same stuff, going to church. So how dare you make mockery of our black Christian when you are black power and you do the same thing. You just go to your church and you think your, your church is better than their church because your Jesus is black or your Jesus speaks Arabic or Hebrew but y'all all, all gone to church and we make prophets out of, out of our freedom fighters so Malcolm is a Malcolm is a, 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 a 
something to worship, a prophet of the new church. John Henry Clark and Dr. Ben, the, the, the figures, the prophets and the messengers of a pan-African church. Our Savior has arrived. When did, when did the Savior arrive? Because you're still in the same condition. And there ain't nothing changing. Because you listen to DVDs. Ain't nothing changed. Because you went to the lectures and you went to the debates and you gave so-and-so cash apps. If your Savior has arrived, you should be saved. But I have to respect those things because if it was not for those things, I would not exist. This is why we must mature. At one time you believed in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny or some other story. But as you grow up, as you mature, you remember some of the lessons to learn from those stories, but you know it's just a story. As you mature, nobody don't have to tell you, you know those were just fairy tales, they were just stories. Since 1930, when Master Farah Muhammad first appeared, he gave us a story. He gave you stories. Because he knew that we had an immature mind, a childish mindset. But as time goes on, you're supposed to mature. You're supposed to evolve and you see some of that, a little taste. But in 2024, you're still there. You're still in 1930, 1950, 1970. Some of y'all go all the way back 5,000, 5, 6,000 BC. Like, damn. Instead of going forward, you're going backwards. Instead of progressing, you're digressing. You cannot even replicate what they did in 1930. You can't replicate what they did 5,000 B.C. You claim that Kemet had all this science and whatever. You can't even replicate none of it. The only thing you can do is talk. We used to. We used to do this and we used to do that. We, we used to. Do it now. Nobody care about what you used to be, what you used to do. And you get angry and upset because you can't replicate. I'm doing the best I can. Well, uh, nobody want to hear that. I'm doing the best I can. Nobody want to hear that. Mr. Man, let's talk about it. Mr. Man, I'm going to tell you the reason why you're doing these things because you lack manhood. You think that you are a man. I've had guests, men guests come here. Those who follow this platform know how I talk. Those who just visit, I can tell the men really don't like what I have to say about manhood, about us. See, there's body language, and I'm looking at your eyes. I'm watching your, your movements. I know you don't like, but see, I'm so strong here. You won't challenge what I have to say. You'll keep it to yourself. Why is that? You are mad. Speak up. Why are you holding your tongue? Speak up. You're not going to do it because you know your idea and what you believe manhood is, is weak because you know you're weak. Let's talk about 
manhood. Sisters, y'all can watch, y'all can listen. I'm talking to, to the so-called men. And the sad thing about it, y'all so damn weak, you can't even listen to words. That's how weak you are. You are afraid of words. So if you are afraid of words, we know that you are afraid of nuclear weapons and AK-47s and grenade launches and all these things that these men are dealing with day in and day out. You don't know nothing about the body bags. All kinds of body bags are being brought out in the Ukraine war. They don't like to show that because it's bad for morale. It's bad for the morale of those who are fighting to see, like, damn, they're killing the hell out of us. It's bad for the nation to see your soldiers going to the moor. But that's the reality of Mr. Man in this civilization. And you don't have that experience, Mr. Man, Mr. God. You don't have that experience. I might not have to cross that line, but parental discretion is advised. I probably won't cross the line, but just in case the Holy Spirit kicks in, <laughs> and when the Holy Spirit kicks in, you don't know where the Holy Spirit going to take you. <laughs> so, Parental discretion is advised. I've been wanting to do this talk for a little bit. I don't know where to start. There's so much to cover. But we want to lay down the foundation. Those of you who build a house, you know the most important thing about a house, or really whenever you're doing anything, you want to build a strong foundation so whatever we don't get to today then when we talk about it later we've laid down the strong foundation and the weak men don't want to continue that conversation because they won't be able to qualify I call us men by default you're not a man. You call a man because you got you have a penis. You're a man by default. I know many of these don't like hearing that. Because they feel as though they're a good man. But see, there's different levels of manhood. When I was a little boy, As most little boys, you know that you're not female. So you are naturally attracted to your own gender. You want to be a man. You want to see what is it I'm going to be when I grow up, when I become an adult. Oh, wow, that's what I'm going to be. And even as a little boy, some of you may have felt that way. When I looked at the men around me, I looked at my father and grandfather and uncles and male cousins when I, and, and the preachers, the pastors. and the, When I looked at them, I had respect. Of course, as a child, I gave them respect. I just did not feel that essence I wanted to be, even as a little boy, I don't, I don't want to be. I did not, I did not feel from them no more than I was, and I was a child. I was a little boy. I did not see something stronger than myself, and I was a boy. So I'm thinking to myself, what ma what makes them a man? I didn't know nothing about sex, so I didn't know what that was. 
Is it is it building a house, having a job? What what is it? What is it? Cause I don't see nothing strong about them. I didn't see. I was not attracted to them their manhood. And then as I matured, I felt a little something when I was introduced to the fruit of Islam, the FOI, the Nation of Islam teaching. And I saw those men, because I'd never heard nothing like that before, how they talked and the things they said and how they move. I like that. So I want to be like that. I want to I want to grow. I want to be an FOI. I want to be a man. That's what I viewed as a child. I, as a child, I'm going to say that again. As a child, as a child, as a teenager, as a child and a teenager. But as we experience life, as we grow, we begin we begin to mature. What we what we was yesterday, we're not today. We begin to grow. What you was at eight years old, hopefully, hopefully you're not at 35. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are those of you, you act the same way you did when you was in high school. You just a you just a older version of a high school person. That's a shame. This is a big problem. We don't mature. And that is uh, Brother Talik from the Reality Temples on Earth channel. And if you get a chance uh, to subscribe, please, please do subscribe to his channel. He's a, he's a good brother. You know, he's trying to, he's doing good work and he wants to do good constructive things. He has good information to provide. So please do check out his channel if you get a chance. We was already doing for ourselves. Even, even with all the oppression, we were accomplishing things. Far greater than the black and the blacks have done. They've done very little. Except bring you the teaching, the belief. Because that's all teachings is. I believe. We don't need to believe no more. We need to know.
next week on these same stations. And you can bet your last money, it's all going to be a stone gas, honey. I'm Don Cornelius, and as always, in parting, we wish you love.